milk on the gingerbread, the icing on the cake. It's monuments and mirror glass, the city's on the make. The devil take the hindmost, and no one counts the cost. It's such a sweet reflection. No. You could call it ambition. Someone has to greet. Don't want you for a friend if you're a friend in need. I'm gonna tell the truth if you swallow a lie. I want the icing on the cake. No. your raincoat for heaven's sake it's gonna rain coming with us Chelsea not wagging again <laughs> I was going to see you at the wedding later. Well, I've been thinking, Brad, if you really want to keep Maxine off your tail, then I'd better look after her. I'm going to jack up a meeting that'll keep her tied up till after it's over. Yeah, but you're my best mate. I wanted you here. Yeah. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. <laughs> You ought to have invited her. At least you'd know what she's up to. Arsenic in the champagne. <laughs> Maxine knows how to behave when it suits her. Yes, yeah, she's better off out of the way. Well, I'd better be going. I hope it all goes well. <laughs> I'll see you when you get back from the honeymoon. Keep an eye on him, Olivia. I'll do the same for you one day. I'm not planning on a divorce. <laughs> well, if I were Maxine, I'd spit tax. She's not going to like this at all. Oh, come on, Mum. You've enjoyed the secrecy of the whole thing as much as any of us. Late again. You're lucky I'm here at all. My mother warned me about places like this. I wish she'd been right more often. Where's Max? Not in yet. Well, I suppose she's heard the good news. Our cover story's on top back this morning. We've uh, sold out at our local dairy. We've only been out a day. Oh. So who's Maxine's favourite boy, then? Who would have thought the true confessions of Esme Rambert would have stirred up such a hornet's nest? Oh, you wait for part two. Details of more lurid affairs. Yeah, she's had a very colourful past. I don't know how she found time for them all. And I didn't think she'd gone for her old man like that. First aspiring party leader we brought down. So when does he file for divorce? Who cares? We got the story. What's magazine? You know, if I stay around women's magazines long enough, I may stop believing in the tooth fairy. Here's a man who gets votes out of convincing people he's got no vested interest in property. And here's his wife of 20 years, who spills how many shares he's got in the biggest three developers in the country. <laughs> And I thought married people stuck up for one another. Oh, pull the other one. They want Max to go and I with this news. Oh, that should help their ratings. Well, Bridget, that should put a couple of uh, extra grand on my new contract, don't you reckon? Don't buy now. Max never puts a money where a mouth is. You're only as good as your next story, darling. Mm. Frankly, I've got to hand it to Maxine. I never thought it was our sort of story, and I've never put it on the cover. There she is, Phipps. Esme Rambert. <laughs> These days, she looks more like a district nurse. But underneath, they reach the heart of a rat poisoner. Oh, it takes one to know one. Bridget! That 
is what I'm talking about. The binding mm. problem. I told him it would never work. This magazine has not built its reputation on falling apart the moment you get it home. I'm the laughing stock in this city. Hardly, Maxine. First it was cheaper paper, and now this. They might as well put a gun to my head, and they might as well pull the trigger. It's a great cover story. Some retailers are sold out already. It's a great cover story, and the inside of the magazine disintegrates. I've agreed for you to be at a radio interview at 3 o'clock and another at 4.15. Mm. Oh, and Reed Chappell will be down to see you later about something before lunch. Good. I'll get on to him about this production fiasco. Heads, I'll go to roll, Bridget. Morning, Grandma. Chelsea, darling. What have you done to your hair? I went to the hairdressers. If I'm going to be a bridesmaid, I should make a bit of an effort, shouldn't I? <laughs> it's not quite what I would have chosen. But it's old-fashioned. Morning, Dad. Now, you're not going to nag me about my hair, are you? Had it done specially for you. You look fine to me. At least you're here, Chelsea. That's the main thing. You're not skipping any exams, are you? Couldn't miss my own dad's wedding, could I? What about your mother? Mm, she's in such a bad mood this morning, she wouldn't notice anything. Don't worry, Dad, I haven't told her. Good girl. Fast mover, huh, Grandma? Mm. I think the heart attack might have changed your father's view on life. I suppose it's romantic marrying a nurse. <laughs> Don't think Mum will think it is, though. Cara is not exactly Mum's type. Hope he's not going to mess this one up. I think she's nice. I think she's charming. I can't wait to see Alistair's face when <laughs> Dad tells There's him. There's going to be a lot of amazed faces <laughs> at this wedding, dear. <laughs> but he didn't have the guts to tell Mum. Last I knew, she was organising a dinner party to welcome him back from his holiday. She was wondering why it hadn't run. And in Gloss magazine, the deputy leader, Owen Rambert, has a 60% thick holding in the Axis Corporation. Esme Rambert's confessions have shown him that the stock exchange is capable of the theory. I'm Gloss. Hello, Esme. old muck raking. Morning, darling. I thought you'd run away. Why would I do a thing like that? Stage fright. You're just afraid it'll come to my senses and escape before it's too late. I thought about it for a split second. Is that my breakfast? It is. Well, I won't eat a thing unless you kiss me again. says you shouldn't do this sort of thing without a formal invitation. I'll have the card engraved tomorrow. Well, he could have warned me he had a change of plans. If you knew what I went through to get these hats, I crawled out of broken glass. These aren't crummy local copies, you know. But they're from Paris. Morning, Jasmine. Now, look here, you lot. You can keep your lousy mitts off these hats. There's ten grand's worth in here. And if I catch you fooling around with them, I'll do you. Just when I was thinking I needed a new chef, I was to make my bag manner. Oh, do let me try one, Jasmine. You know I look divine and pink with netting. We should have done this job a week ago. It's not my fault. They decided to tie it in with some champagne promotion. Hmm. See you tomorrow, Jasmine. Who wears hats these days anyway, apart from my mum? Everyone, by the time I finish with them. Everyone but... Magda, that is. Women with short legs look vile in hats. It's just one of those things. Short legs? Hmm. I might as well kill myself. Don't let me stand in your way. Oh, dear, another loony letter for Maxine. Makes a change. What's this week's exciting theme? 
Could you please tell me what colour panties you wear? <laughs> Basic black, of course. What else? Gloss magazine. No, I'm sorry. Mrs. Redfern isn't taking any calls just now. OK. Who was it this time? Rupert Murdoch, sending his congratulations. Tom? I'm very pleased. I've just had the party general secretary on the line weeping buckets. Yeah. Believe me, we're lucky to live in a free country. By the way, if you don't want to do one of those talkback shows, I wouldn't no, mind definitely giving it not a... your thing, Don. Magda, how's that feature on eligible bachelors coming along? Just about there. But I've got to get Brad organised for the group photograph. I wish I could get them to pose in their scans. Well, you wouldn't want to see Brad in his. It would dispel too many illusions. <laughs> He's not really a bachelor, though, is he? Brad's been married. Oh. Well, I can't afford to be too fussy. Not if I want pretty faces. And they've got to be pretty. Oh, Mr. Chapel, Mrs. Reed, for instance, been expecting you. What do you think, Reed? About what? Do you think a man's looks are important, or should he be judged by his mind? I think it's far wiser to consider the size of his uh, bank balance. That one. That's all I need. What's wrong with the one next door? Nah, not classy enough. No, what I really want is something oldish. Probably a bit of ivy growing all over it, big trees. Wall-to-wall -wall antiques. <laughs> if you insist. Not while I'm working at the hospital, I won't. Most of my patients are worse off than I am. Well, if you will work in the sticks. I like it where I am. The only thing that makes me unhappy is the thought of losing you. Come on. Gemma? You're trespassing. So what? Come on. Make me. <laughs> oh. <Woo. laughs> uh. Admit it. Wouldn't it be nice to be rich? I could never forgive myself. Lay off the accountant, will you? He's got the message about the binding. Thank you, Pania. Sack him, and I will. This cost-cutting applies right across the company, not just here on Gloss. It's been a bad year. Mm -mm, not on this magazine. We're the only thing making money, and you know it. We'll see about the binding. You free at lunchtime? Why? I've got a few worries about this Esme Rambert story. I've asked Carla Jameson over to sort them out. Well, the story's already been checked. That's what we pay her for. Yes, I've had a call from her lawyers. Oh. Has Carla gone and let something go through? I don't want to go into it now. I said we'll meet her here at one o'clock. Is that all right with you? Fine. Don't understand it, though. Carla's usually so good at her job. Oh, it's probably nothing. Don't worry. Uh, who's in Bali at the moment? Brad. Mm. He usually writes when he's on holiday. Though somebody said he was home. Have you seen him? No. He's sure to ring up. Always wants to brag about something he's got up to. Mm. I was... Um, <clears throat> Thinking about booking out Al's diner on Saturday night and having a party for him. What do you think? Mm. Well, he's been lying a bit low since his heart attack. He'll be getting out of practice. Perhaps he's going to go in for the quiet life. Oh! <sighs> the novelty would soon wear off. <laughs> See the tree over there? Bryce and I built a tree hut in there one summer. I've still got the scar on my knee from the time we had a fight and I fell out. What were you fighting about? Marbles. <laughs> I think it was marbles. Could have been anything. We just liked to argue. Sad that he died. The crown prince? Sad, all right. Poor old mum. She soon found out I couldn't step into Bryce's shoes. Did Maxine have a meeting? Maxie? What's she got to do with it? Well, she used to be married to you. It's strange if I didn't think about it today. Well, don't. How will she feel about us? It's none of her business. She must have loved you once. You must have loved her. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I don't understand. I hope you never do. She can't spoil our life together. Only you and I can do that. 
You're talking about the woman who smashed every window in our house because she couldn't get her own way. Who ripped up every piece of clothing in my wardrobe. Who stabbed me once with the scissors and then dined out on how hilarious it was for weeks. She's mad. She's mad enough to do anything. From now on, she belongs out of my life. Have you told her that? She'll find out soon enough. Did you ever want? I hope it's the right length, Chelsea. I finished off the head last night. Grandma doesn't like my hair, does she? I thought it matched all right. A bit unorthodox, but I don't mind. I'm glad you agreed to do it. Just hope your mother's not going to be too angry when she finds out. Your father's painted a pretty grim picture of how ferocious she can be when she's angry. <laughs> but he's no angel either. I've had some terrible rows. But you know, Dad, he's got a pretty short temper himself when he gets going. It's not a side I've seen of him yet. No, I suppose you haven't. No, he's all right, really. It's just him and Mum. It's always been a sort of love-hate thing. You know what it's like with people sometimes. I suppose so. Everyone thought they'd go on forever like that. But one day he didn't come home. That was that. Oh? But you know all about that. Anyway, it's ancient history. <laughs> Mum hates frills. I love them. Mum got married in Scarlet. She says it was because she was a Scarlet woman. That sounds very daring. I suppose it was because she was pregnant. Grandma was furious. I didn't know that. Doesn't matter anyway. Only Mum says that's why Grandma doesn't like Alistair. I'm sure she does. Well, why would she? All he cares about is girls and money. He must have his good points. Can't think of any. You sound like a typical sister. Well, I don't know what girls see in him. They must be desperate. I'll be looking forward to meeting him. He's going to get a shock when he meets you, that's for sure. Morning, partner. You look a bit the worse for wear. What a night. Maybe you could make it. The accountant's due in in a minute. I suppose you forgot. You forgot. Well, it's no big deal. I can probably handle it on my own. Oh, you know what? I'm supposed to be having lunch with my grandmother today. Oh, no, I can't face it. I wish you'd warn me about those things, Alistair. We have got a lot of bookings at lunchtime today. Yeah, yeah. Hello, Grandma. It's Alistair here. Look, I know I'm supposed to be coming around for lunch today, but... Right at Grandma. I'll be there. See you soon. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Pixie. Can you spare us some time looking at the bookkeeping then? Yeah, sure. Hey, Alex, I'm sorry. It's family. Quiet. than I thought. Oh, give it a chance. It's cheap. Well, Magda, what do you think? Is it moi? It's your kitty when you get <laughs> I think I'll take this one. It's so perfect with my short legs. <laughs> all right, all right. Good Better legs. put them back. We don't want them getting knocked around before the champagne marvelous. promotion. Marvelous. Assuming it's still going ahead. Still can't get hold of Brad? No. That was all his bright idea. Well, Bridget, I've got to find him for that group photograph. He said he'd do it before he went away. My darling, where did you get that hat? You look positively vile. Terrace, actually. Come on, we better put these away. Oh, I like that little black one. Oh, no, you don't. She'll be back any minute. Oh. Have you heard from Brad, Maxine? He said he'd be back this mm. week. Seems to be lying low. On the floor, perhaps, listening to his heartbeat. <laughs> I was thinking of having a welcome home party for him. Lots of junk kids and nurses running around with the monitors. <laughs> better not make them too attractive or he'll keel over again. I'd like to speak to you for a minute, Mom. 
I wish Mr. Redfin had fancy me. He's neat. Oh, don't worry. You get your chance with Brad. Everyone else has. Right. Who's been at my hats? What hats? Oh, I've seen if it's about my new contract. Reed things... Chapel has got our liable law coming to see me soon about the Esme Rambo article. Well, they looked it over before it was published. What's the problem? Apparently, her lawyers want to get their claws on us. Is there anything riding on this article that I don't know about? Like what? I've got the tapes out there, if that's what you're worried about. I just want to make sure they can't get us on malice. Oh, of course they can't. I don't even know her, old man. I mean, if you're going to get into politics, you can't afford to think you can keep secrets. Are you being on the level with me? Of course. Okay. Would you mind checking this budget out for me, Maxine? Sure. Well, I suppose he can't do us any more harm if we put him on to write him out lifestyle. You're putting Don into lifestyle pieces? Oh, he won't like it. Well, let's just keep him on ice for a while. Thanks. Here. I think you'll like the vintage. I suppose I can make it bearable. Mm, of course you will. It'll just be a bit lonely, that's all. Great cover story, eh? They're running the second half next month. Especially this bit. By uh, Magda McGrath from Plastic Surgery. I hope I can write as well as this one day. Come on. We're the rising star of the press back home. Well, it's easy enough to be a big fish in a small pond. I know my writing isn't sharp enough yet. You know you can do it. And they wouldn't have taken you on if you weren't up to it. You're being very generous. I suppose you think I'm going to get all this out of my system and come back home. It'd be nice if you did. <laughs> You'd be lucky. Once I get a taste of the big time, there'll be no holding me back. Still, at least you know you've got a home to come back to. Come on. Let's go and get a good look at this town before you have to go home. They'd better watch out. No, I'm not sure they're ready for Gemma Stace out there. <laughs> That's enough, dear. Those will go nicely with the bought ones. Just one more. Uh -huh. How lucky you are to have a garden like this so close to the city. I always wanted a garden where I could pick great armfuls of flowers. Of course, it's all getting too much for me. Nonsense, Mum. That's what you pay the gardeners for. Gardeners don't love the gardens the way I always did, Brad. And they're not here all the time, looking at all the little details. Sometimes I think I ought to sell the place, buy one of those home units like so many of my friends, and just potter around with a few pot plants. Sell this place you wouldn't, would you, Mum? All those memories. Hmm. I've got to be practical. I'm one person alone amongst all those rooms. And then the security. Women my age are being attacked all the time, living alone. The world's not changing for the better, is it? Yeah, if it's selling up and moving on, that's a big thing. I wouldn't do it without due consideration, Bradley. You understand, I'm sure, Cara. Oh, of course. Still, if it were my place, I couldn't bear to leave it. We'll see. So, now that the accountant's told you, I suppose you'll believe it. Yeah. Is that all you have to say? What do you expect me to say? It's as big a shock for me as it is for you. I should never have let you talk me into it. It might be the flashiest kitchen in town, but the repayments are going to ruin us. Don't exaggerate. Where's the extra income you so confidently predicted? It'll come. Give it a chance. And in the meantime, how do we pay the bills? We borrow a bit more. Great! The Alistair Redfern recipe for bankruptcy. You're just like the old man. Listen, Alex, this is just a temporary setback, that's all. I'd never rip you off. You'd sell your own grandmother if you thought she'd make a profit. I'll make it up. With what? You'll see. You needn't trust that again. No, I don't have to listen to this. The trouble with you, Mr. Redfern, is that you don't have to do anything. A few lousy bucks! Cara? Anything the matter? No. Feeling all right? I told you, I never felt better. Good. It's going to be a long day. Chelsea told me something interesting this morning. Oh, what was that? 
She said Maxine was pregnant when you got married. Is that true? Uh, yes. Matter of fact, she was. And she said your mother was very upset about it. Well, that was true. But it was a long time ago. People got upset about that sort of thing then. She never really liked Maxine anyway. Oh. You shouldn't let anything Chelsea says upset you. She's only a child. All right. Caro, I didn't come here to talk about something that happened all those years ago. What did you come here to say? Just that I love you. You mean you haven't changed your mind since five minutes ago? I haven't changed my mind since the first minute I met you. Neither have I. And you mustn't believe everything you're told, you know? All right. I promise not to. Brad. Hmm? When are we going to tell your mother about the baby? Charlie? What on earth do you think you're doing? I thought this might be a good house to burgle. Do you have a spare colour television by any chance? No. But we have some silver spoons with terribly good hallmarks. I was wondering, um, who the hell are you? My grandmother lives here. And why should I believe you? The family resemblance is so striking. Are you with Meals on Wheels? No, actually. I'm with Mr. Redfern. <laughs> the old dog. Well, it figures you're up to the usual standard. Where is my grandmother, by the way? Organising the cake. Are you Alistair? I am. I'm Caroline Beecham. Your father and I are... are... just good friends. We're getting married. What? It's true, we're getting married. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have broken it to you like that. What about Maxine? Does Maxine know? I don't believe so. I think... Well! You've met, I gather. You should have warned me about the wedding. Now I've come without a present. I would have told you myself. Only you found your own way in. That's also hard to take in all of a sudden. I always thought you were the bachelor type, you know? You always were when you were with Mother. It looks as if your father's changed his mind. And when's the big day? Today, son. In about an hour's time. There'll only be a few guests. Your sister's here. And my mother? She's not invited. I see. So, you're going to be my stepmother. I wonder what that'll be like. Over there, that's where I batted when I was at Varsity here. It was a real dive. Where's the Gloss building? Somewhere in there, near Queen Street. I like it. Would you mind? <laughs> you know, I reckon Jean Paul Gaultier's gone off. That woman looks like a yak. That's what I thought. Oh, hello, it's Magda McGrath here from Gloss Magazine. Would Mr. Bradley Redfern be available, please? Look! There's Bianca Jagger wearing the identical one. Mm, thank you. Identical what? That black hat I got for the champagne promo. Worth 500 quid. I told you. Mm. No wonder Mick does her. She looks like a horse. So what? So does Mick. Take your latest gym shoes under my bed any time. Oh, you're revolting. He's twice your age. All that experience. That's what she's thinking about. Experience? Mm, some of us would rather forget. Still can't get hold of Brad. Oh, I'm getting fed up with all of this. So, how's the lighting feature coming then? Anyone that'd trust you to do a design feature must be out of their tree. Max is grooming me for great things. <laughs> Dream on, sweetheart. Oh, I think all that costume should just work out fine. <sighs> Thanks, Bridget. I can't, so won't know what hit them. Oh, where would I be without you? Hopelessly in debt. You've absolutely no head for figures. Well, I certainly know how to spend money. We're a good partnership. Well, you have to say that. No one else would work with you. What makes you think that? Years of intimate acquaintance. <laughs> You're a rude cow. But I do know my arithmetic. Is that all? Hmm. Well, 
Who did you hear? A progressive kindergarten? Don't you like it? Good, I'll make sure I keep it like this. Keep the dress as well. It makes you look ridiculous. I don't care what you think. And whose idea was it for you to be Daddy's bridesmaid? Mine, it so happens. And did you think about Mummy? Or doesn't your mind run to the obvious? What's it got to do with Mum? Everything I would have thought. Don't they teach loyalty in private schools these days? I don't care. I wouldn't like to be in your shoes when she finds out. Dad wanted me to. And Dad always gets what he wants. You're going to be like that. Why don't you just go? And miss my own father's wedding, to which I've been so cordially invited? Don't be silly. I was at the last one, after all, and I don't intend to miss any of the others. Do you suppose the brides will get progressively younger? There is no need to be such a pig. I think I'm being perfectly charming about the whole affair. Especially since I only found out 15 minutes ago. Miss Redfern, your grandmother wishes to see you. Sure. Ah, Rita, I was just saying to my sister, let's hope this will be the first of many happy family weddings. <laughs> just as you say, Mr. Redfern. Oh, get you. See you in the weekend. See you. Thought it was a bit of a long shot. Thanks. What are you so cheerful about? Last I heard, Esme Rambert's lawyers were gunning for you. Well, they're just trying it on. Mm. Not the best time to ask for another five grand a year. Hi. Hi. I'm Jim Estace, the new staff writer. I'm supposed to be starting tomorrow. Oh, Bridget. You're sulking. I'm not sulking. You're Jim Estace, aren't you? Hi. Sorry to trouble you. I've probably come at a really bad time. It's just that I didn't remember much about the place after my interview, and, well, I'm starting tomorrow, so I, as I was passing, I thought I'd Clinton drop the staff. I suppose. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, I don't think we've even got your desk ready. Oh, I'll go through it this afternoon. Oh, I don't mind organising it. I've got nothing else to do. All right, then. It's over here. Oh, Magda, this is Gemma Stace. She's starting tomorrow. Hi. Hey, I really like your feature this month, the one on plastic surgery. Oh, thanks. Well, as you can see, our last writer was a bit of a slob. She left to do PR for a biscuit company. <laughs> Come on. Maxine might as well know you're here before we get started in on all of this. Come in. Jim Pace is here. Who? The new writer. Oh, so do I. Oh, well, Bridget, so much for the chaps and their scants. Our answer to the Miss New Zealand show. Bread. Maybe at the restaurant. Have you tried there? Oh, no, I don't think so, somehow. Still, I'll give it a go. Or his mother's place. What about trying there? Oh. Now we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. A grown man at his mother's. Well, if he gets on well with Olivia. With all that money, who wouldn't? I've got great hopes for you, Gemma. You've got a lot of writing experience for a girl of your age. Oh, mostly in newspapers, of course. Newspapers are a dead end, though. I've been dying to try something new. And you're a good age. Younger than the rest of us. You must have a good idea of what our younger readers are interested in. I hope so. I imagine you must have some idea about what you want to do ultimately. I mean, a small magazine office like this gives good all-round experience. I'd like to try my hand at everything. Yes, but what's your ultimate ambition? Fashion writing? I'd like your job. <laughs> my job? Yeah. I'd like to be the editor of Gloss. Oh. Who knows? You might even pull it off one day. <laughs> I realise I've got a while to go yet. Come in. Mr. Jeffrey and Miss Jameson are here. Thank you, Panya. You can go now, Gemma. Hello, Carla. Read. Who's that? She's pretty. Mm. Our new writer. She'll probably be running the place in six months. How's Dinah? Oh, How's that you, Magda? No, I haven't seen Mr. Redfern today. He's not booked in. No, Alice does not hear either. He's out to lunch at his grandmother's. Bye. Ah, you should be able to help. Three-letter word meaning rodent. Rat. You're angry with me about Maxine. Why don't you just say so? Mum? No, oh, I don't suppose she'll mind your remarrying. 
She'd be a little bit surprised that she wasn't on the guest list. After all, you were the best of buddies until this holiday of yours. Some people even thought you might get married again one day. All children think that when their parents divorce. I thought you'd be a little too old for that. And I thought you'd be a bit too old for this sort of thing yourself. I didn't want Maxine involved. It shouldn't be too difficult to work out why. You're right. She'd definitely have warned the girl. Put her against me, more than likely. Well, someone should warn her. You've probably got to convince you're on the straight and narrow. Of course, the heart attack would have slowed you down a I bit. I came out here to talk to you. I can see that was a waste of time. Come on. This is a boy who watched you squire a new girlfriend every six months for the last ten years. Why should I think this one's any different? Just because she's got a bit more of a plum in her mouth. I'll let your comments pass this once, Alistair, because there was a time I think I deserved them. But I've changed, son, and you're going to have to get used to the idea. And watch what you say about my wife. You're not too old to get a kick in the pants. So where were you when this copy came upstairs to be checked? It's not the story so much. It's the background to it. They say Don used unusual means to get the material. <laughs> what do you mean by unusual means? He tortured the woman, did he? <laughs> not exactly. Rather the opposite, is the inference. Pillow talk? Oh, God, it sounds tacky. I wish we'd never got into this. Of course, the circulation figures will speak for themselves. I'll have to talk to Don again. I didn't think he'd be that enterprising. No. Our lawyers are leaning on us hard. And frankly, I think they've got a good case. Of course, our readers are expecting another dose of Esme in the next issue. Well, they might be disappointed. Oh, it goes absolutely against the grain to publish a retraction. We might have to. This is what happens to most of my bright ideas. Some lousy creep fouls it up every time. Mrs. Redfern's husband, you mean? Ex-husband? But not so very ex. They have one of those relationships that defy the rational mind. Oh, hello. It's uh, Magda McGrath here from Gloss Magazine. Would Mr. Bradley Redfern be there, please? Right. Of course, his mother's loaded. Slapping the son of IBM. And he's been a naughty boy lately, and she's holding on tightly to the purse strings. I'm sorry I can't find him just now. He's getting ready for the wedding. I think that if... Wedding? What wedding? You're overreacting, Bradley. Why should Maxine have any idea? That Magda McGrath is as sharp as a tack. She'll put two and two together. Somebody must have told her. Yes, but who? I think we should all just go quietly about our business. Chelsea, Alistair, we have guests arriving at any moment. I do hope the vicar's not late. Brad, did you put the champagne in the fridge? The caterers have got everything under control. Not quite everything. Surprise for you, Sybil. I am getting married today. No. This is true, Olivia. It's true. I can't wait to tell everyone. They won't believe it, will they, Hamish? Well, I don't think I'd believe Are you it. sure you're not pulling my leg? Oh, no. Father's reformed. He's quite serious. Well, you'll just have to tell me all about it, won't you? They've left it off the hook. What's going on? Something they don't want us to find out about. I bet you Maxine doesn't know what's happening. And I bet you she won't like it. They're getting married, not Alistair. Brad, it's got to be Brad. Brad! Oh, Maxine, I'll kill him. How can we find out? Mm, let's drive round there. Or ring the local vicar. He might know. Good idea. Here, look for a name at the church listing. Here, Cooper Avenue. You think he'll make his honeymoon? Oh, it's the new wife she'll do in. She couldn't bear to harm a hair on darling Bradley's head. They're getting a bit thin, mind you. What about St. Oswald's? That's in Remuera. Give it a try, and I'll try some down. It's him. Brad. No, don't believe it. Oh, poor 
big old swing for that? Get in there! Calm down, Tanya. Oh, if I'm seen to back down on this one, then they'll all try it on. Every good story I get and people will rush into litigation. I don't want to make it a precedent either, but this one's not cut and dried. No, I know what I think. I think we avoid muckraking. I didn't like your handling this sort of material in the first place. I'm going to get my deputy in on this. Bridget. Why are you all staring at me? What have I done? Bridget, do you know what's going on? It's, it's Brad, Maxine. We found him. You found him, so what? Has he had another heart attack? He's at his mother's place, and it seems that... The old romantic's getting married. Reed. Maxine. It seems that Bradley is getting married today. It seems that he failed to inform me. Do you know anything about this? He might have mentioned something. Carla, I'm sure you're a busy girl with lots to do. Why don't you go and do it? Right. Ah, oh, Sam. I was afraid you wouldn't make it. So, Grandma's trusty advisor's here. She doesn't make a move without the old boy, does she? I like him. He's always been good to you and me. Well, so he should be. It's our family business that makes the old boy so rich. Hello, Chelsea. Hello, sir. And what do you two think of your new stepmother? I keep thinking I've seen her before somewhere. But then Dad's always gone for a certain type, hasn't he? Female and good-looking. You'll be delighted, no doubt, that her family connections are impeccable. I should say her father could buy and sell Redfern Construction if he was still alive. And she's the only child. I knew that, of course. Yes, in my opinion, your father has done rather well for himself. I should say so. Olivia! Oh. Tell me, why are we all here today? Ah, Brad's getting married. Oh. We thought you'd enjoy the surprise. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You wish you got to Cairo first, aren't you? Don't be ridiculous. She's not my type. G'day there, Alistair. Your old man's a bit of a dark horse, isn't he? Pity they don't do commemorative ashtrays here in Remuera, don't you think? When your stepmother's profile would lend itself to that sort of thing. Oh, can I quote you on that? Oh, come off it, Phil. Don't tell me they've got you on the social pages these days. Oh, I wish they would. If I could only print half of the locker room gossip I pick up in this town, my dear. We should have told you, of course, but we thought it might be more fun this way. And have you invited Maxine? My ex-wife? It'd be a bit bad taste, don't you think? <laughs> I couldn't agree more. But you know how she hates to miss a party. Oh. <laughs> Bob, I'm so glad you and Helen were able to come today. Our Bradley's getting married today. Would you believe it? I'm so pleased for him. I thought his would have been a case of once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> Such a charming girl. Caroline Beecham. They met in hospital, you know. She saved his life, I'm quite convinced. Beecham? Knew a Beecham? Is he here? No, no, they're both dead. Fox Bay people. I believe her father used to play polo. Crashed his plane. You know the fella. Hmm? Wife died, too. Yes, terrible for the girl, of course. But she has a new family now. True businessman, Rod Beecham. Wonder if the girl's inherited any of his nows. <laughs> Brad could do with a bit of it. <laughs> Don't they make a charming couple? Nurse, you say? A very good one. <laughs> you can't just dismiss Carla like that. We hadn't finished. It'll keep. I'm going to a wedding. Where is it, by the way, Reed? Where is it? At his mother's place. Cozy. Panya, cancel those radio interviews, urgent family business calls. Don, about your contract. We won't be renewing it. What, Jasmine, not at all? dear, I need a hat. A hat? Yes, you can't go to a wedding without a hat, and I do believe you have some. You're sacking oh. me, is that it? Oh, What's what for? Do, thank you. But no, that's the one that Bianca Jagger got. Oh, God forbid that Paris fashion should pander to a Nicaraguan and they're barely out of the jungle. And cancel my talkback show, will you? What's she going to do? Bite the heads of some puppies, I expect. Uh, if I could have everybody's attention, please. 
The ceremony is about to begin. Bradley, Caroline, would you join me over here, please? Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. I've had it with her, her and her lifestyle features. She knows what she can do with a sophisticated lighting for the townhouse. You think you've got problems? What am I going to tell Jaime Cohen about his hat? First, it was ordained for the procreation of children, to be brought up in the fear and nurture of the Lord and to praise his holy name. Secondly, it was ordained as a remedy against sin and to avoid fornication, that such persons who do not have the gift of continency might marry and keep themselves undefiled members of Christ's body. Thirdly, it was ordained for human society, health and comfort that one ought to have of one another, both in prosperity and adversity. Which holy estate these two persons present now come to be joined. Uh, therefore, if, if, if any man may show just cause why they should not be lawfully joined together, let him now speak or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Gloss continues next Thursday night at 8 on 2. Next, it's an hour of action with Stingray. Don't want you for a friend of your a friend in need. 